With the rise of Valve Steam Deck, tools such as Wine, Proton, and distributions like Pop! OS and Manjaro, gaming on Linux is becoming more viable than ever before. However, despite these advancements, gaming on Linux can still be a bit complicated for beginners, and there are going to be some key things you need to know before you get started, and that is what this video is going to be for, give you a base understanding of just about everything you need to know before you go ahead and dive on into the Linux gaming scene. And I will note before we even get started, if you are somebody who who's wanting to get into Linux gaming, do note that even though there are a ton of compatibility tools available, not all games are going to work. Primarily Windows games that rely on kernel level anti-cheat systems. And an example of this is something like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, particularly any online gameplay. And there's actually ways to go ahead and check to see in advance if the games you want to play are going to work, and we're going to dive into that in just a little bit, right after we thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode, that made this possible. Linode is a service that allows you to spin up your very own Linux servers with ease. And you can use Linode to host a wide variety of gaming servers. They actually have a one-click marketplace where you could spin up a Valheim server, Minecraft server, and a whole bunch more. And of course, this doesn't have to be just gaming servers. You can host WordPress websites, Docker instances, and a whole lot more. Anything that you could do on a Linux server, you can do with Linode. And better yet, there'll be a link down below for a $100 60-day credit, so you can go ahead and try it out today. Now with that, the first thing that we're going to do is talk about Steam and Proton. No matter what system you're on, the very first thing when you want to get into gaming is probably install Steam on your computer. Now, depending on the Linux distribution, that you have installed, getting Steam will be a little bit different. In most cases, you could just go ahead and go onto the App Store or the Software Center, search for it and install it that way. For Fedora, you may need to add the RPM Fusion repositories. And for Ubuntu or Debian, you may need to go to the Steam website directly and download it from there. For me personally, the best and easiest way is just to install Steam with the flat package. And I'll go ahead and link down below to that so you can just run a couple simple commands and get that installed. And once you have Steam on your system, you can go ahead and install and launch any Linux native game as you normally would. Now things can get a little more complicated when you want to play a game that cannot run on Linux natively. To play Windows only games, you're gonna to need to use something called Proton. Proton is a collection of software and libraries combined with a patched version of Wine to help improve performance and compatibility with the Windows games. It's built into Steam, so there's no extra installations or tweaking or anything you really need to do, in most cases, to get a lot of games working. And this can be enabled for a specific game by right-clicking on it, going into Properties, Compatibility, and Force Use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool. And then by clicking on the drop-down and selecting the version of Proton you want to use. Generally, it's recommended just to use the latest non-experimental branch, as this will get about 80% of games working Working, as long as they don't contain some sort of anti-cheat software. And like I mentioned earlier, you can check in advance if various games are going to work with Proton at all, and you could do that with ProtonDB. In this website, you just go ahead and search any game you want, and there's going to be user-generated reports about how well a game works through compatibility tools. And you can get additional tips such as launch options to help get a specific game working out of the box. And you could even have ProtonDB look up your specific Steam library and check the percentage of games compatible. Now, there may be a situation which just normal Proton or any specific versions that are just available through Steam are not going to work with the game that you want to play, and this may be a case that Proton GE is going to work better for you. This is the fork of Proton by Glorious Egg Roll, and I'll link to his Twitter down below if you're interested in learning a little bit more about who he is, but basically Proton GE contains patches and fixes for specific games that may not be included in mainline Proton, and it uses the most recent bleeding edge Proton experimental line. And just overall, it could do a lot of things that the Proton mainline cannot do. An example of this is Fall Guys. And this is just an example of something that you may need to kind of play around with and figure out. As with this, to get it to install properly with its anti-cheat, I needed to initially launch the game with the version 7-15, and then to actually play the game, I needed to launch it with 7-24. Now, in addition to Proton GE, you could also use Wine GE if you're trying to run some non-Steam games. Now, in order to actually use Proton GE, you're going to need to install it. And by far the easiest way to do that is with a tool called Proton Up. Now, Proton Up is a CLI utility, but there's a program called Proton Up. QT, which gives you a GUI so it's a lot more user-friendly. 
With this tool, you simply open it, select your Steam install location, click Add Version, and select the compatibility tool you want to install. Not only does this tool make it very easy to install Proton GE, but there's also a lot of other tools available, including Broxtron, which is used for DOS games, Luxtrapeta, which is using open source engines for games like Doom, and Robota for Scrim VM games. Once you install the tool through Proton Up, you just right click on the game you want to use it on and select that version of Proton in the compatibility options. So now there's probably gonna be a case in which you want to play a game that is not just available in Steam. And it is at this point, it might get a little more complicated, but of course there are gonna be tools that are available to help you out. And for this, we're gonna to have to start with Lutris. Lutris is a game manager for Linux that allows you to add and launch games from many different launchers and emulators. This sort of makes it like an all-in-one spot for all of your games. It also has community maintained install scripts that allows you to easily set up and configure Wine and your game inside of a Wine prefix. To use one of these, we just have to head over to Add Games, search the Lutris website for the installers, and then I can easily search for whatever game I want and install it through Lutris. It does seem to be a bit clunky in some places. For example, Steam apps won't install through Lutris for me, and for that reason, I prefer for using Bottles or Game Hub. With that next step, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Bottles. This is an app that makes running Wine a lot easier. I've made a full video on this already, but as a summary, you can use Bottles to create instances for Wine completely customize Wine in the settings with a very good looking user interface, easily install dependencies, and easily install different game launchers. This program does require you to actually know what you're doing a little bit more than some of the other options on this list, but it's very complete and a polished application and very useful to get some non-Steam games running. For example, in my Bottles video, I used it to go ahead and get Empire Earth 2 running that I went ahead and purchased through good old games. Now, another option if you want to go ahead and play games that are either from the Epic Game Store or GOG Galaxy, the Heroic Launcher is a good option for that. With this, you can sign into your Epic Games Launcher account, and then it'll go ahead and list the games in your library. You can attempt to install them with different wine runners, configure different wine settings, and then install and run the games through it. But do keep in mind that a lot of games with anti-cheat will not work. So you can't use this to play games like Fortnite. But like I did mention earlier, there are some cases that you can get anti-cheat to work, such as Fall Guys with the workarounds that we mentioned earlier. Now another option for non-Steam games is Game Hub. And like Lutris, it's supposed to be an all-in-one program for launching your games. It has support for things like GOG, Humble Bundle, and Itch.io. And you can also import your Steam games and emulated ROMs into Game Hub. And it actually does have support for things such as Wine and Proton, as well as different tweaks for both of these programs. It even has full gamepad and controller support. So with that, I want to briefly touch on drivers. We will be talking about some more gaming related tools in just a bit, but one common issue or one common thing you're gonna run into is getting video drivers to work, especially if you have a Nvidia card. And in terms of GPU drivers, if you're running an Intel GPU or integrated graphics on an Intel CPU, you don't have to worry about GPU drivers at all. If you're using AMD graphics, for the most part, you will not need to install any drivers either. The open source AMD drivers perform great with pretty much all games. However, the open source driver is missing some features that require proprietary AMD blobs. Because of this, for some programs like DaVinci Resolve, you may still need to install the proprietary AMD GPU-Pro driver, but in most cases, you are not going to need to worry about it. And if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you're going to want to go ahead and install NVIDIA's proprietary drivers. With most modern cards, the 515 drivers seem to be what works best for me on my systems, but I'll go ahead and link down below to a wiki so you can figure out what might be best for you. Now, different distributions have different ways to install these proprietary drivers. Ubuntu, for example, has a driver manager tool that allows you to install different proprietary drivers you may need. Pop OS has an entire separate ISO that pre-include some of these proprietary NVIDIA drivers. And then Arch, or Arch-based distribution, generally contain these drivers in their repositories. However, for Fedora, you're going to need to install these separately through a repository called AMD Fusion, which contains extra proprietary apps and tools, including those proprietary NVIDIA and AMD drivers. And if you are running a Fedora system, I do recommend you check out our video 
on the things that you should do after you install it as it covers adding RPM Fusion to your system. So now we're gonna talk about some additional tools that you may want to know about if you're gonna be gaming with Linux. And the first thing here is going to be something you've probably seen in videos and is definitely a must have for monitoring your frame rates and overall system usage and that is Mango HUD and Goverlay. With these you can view many different pieces of system information including your temperature, FPS, but also CPU and GPU usage, the amount of RAM and VRAM used, your specific CPU and GPU temperatures, and there are many other toggleable options, including distribution info and even media information. You can also set up different colors and layouts through a configuration file and have it actually log your performance. With this tool installed in Steam, all you have to do is add Mango HUD percent command percent into your game's launch options and it should work fine. Lutris Bottles and Hero Launcher also have options to enable Mango HUD without any manual work. Now the main complaint I have is that the sort of command line and config file based method gives it a bit of a learning curve and that's where Goverlay comes in. Goverlay is a tool that allows you to configure several different overlays including Mango HUD, but also VK Basalt, which is a Vulkan post processing tool, and Replay Sorcery, which is an instant replay capture tool. With this, you can easily configure most of the settings from these tools, including the layout and themes, and my favorite part is globally enabling it on all Vulkan games and applications, so you won't really need to go into those launch options in Steam, for example, for every game you want this to run in. And now what we're gonna do is talk about game mode. This is a daemon that runs in the background that can be activated with a game. Once activated, it will apply some optimizations to your system like a CPU governor, IO priority, kernel scheduling, and GPU performance enhancements in order to make your games run as smooth as possible. Like Mango HUD, most game launchers will have an option to enable it, but for Steam, you'll need to add game mode, percent command percent launch option for it to work. And of course you could go ahead and get Mango HUD and game mode to run at the same time with Steam. And with that, I wanna to briefly touch on emulation as Linux is just a fantastic platform to go ahead and emulate anything, whether that be the original Nintendo, all the way up to a little more recent system such as the Xbox 360. But just installing emulators itself can be a bit annoying as native distribution repositories tend to not include everything you're gonna need as to not expose themselves to to legal risks. However, you can download almost any emulator off of Flathub, and there are some emulators such as RetroArch that will provide you an all-in-one interface with different engines for different retro game consoles. Some other popular tools and platforms include Dolphin, which is a GameCube and Wii emulator, Citra is a 3DS emulator, Play is a PlayStation 2 emulator, and Yuzu is a Switch emulator, which that one's actually kind of funny because Valve accidentally featured that in one of their promotional Steam Deck videos that was promptly taken down. Now personally one of my favorite tools for emulation is called Emulation Station and this is another one of those all-in-one interfaces for emulators. And this is especially good if you want to go ahead and connect it to a TV like I do with my little Steam OS custom build console as this is the perfect option because you could just go ahead and drop your ROMs into the system and then the interface will do a lot of the work for you including the availability to import your ROMs directly into your Steam library as non-Steam games, add all the proper cover art, graphics, descriptions and everything with a single click it is a super handy tool now with that finally I'm gonna end off on custom kernels now this is a little more advanced and something I wouldn't recommend if you're a novice because most of these kernel enhancements are very small or only for very specialized use cases. However, if you do want to get a little more advanced, this might be something you want to look into. And if you're gonna look into this, make sure you look into all the kernels before you install them and make sure you know the risks of installing a custom kernel. If you're on Arch Linux, you can install the Zen kernel, which is generally tuned to try to get a little extra performance and lower latency with high frequency scheduling. And if you're on Fedora, a great kernel is the F sync kernel which adds Zen patches, F-Sync, Futex 2 compatibility, OpenRGB, and many more patches including Steam Deck support. And finally, another great kernel that works on Ubuntu and Debian-based systems is called ExtendMod, I think is how you say it, which adds many performance features including caching, virtual memory management, and CPU frequency governor improvements, in addition to F-Sync support and some patches from Clear Linux. And of course, there's gonna be links down below to everything I mentioned in this video, and I do hope that this video has kinda of guided you in a good direction when it comes to understanding some of the things you may want to consider with Linux 
Gaming. With all that, big thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. Again, there'll be a $100 credit down below, and I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.